You know, we've been taught our whole lives to, to take things one step at a time. And it turns out that that's really the, the wrong approach when you're, when you're planning a city or building a new city. Because you really can't approach city systems in, in, in isolation. Because in, in the real world, city systems don't work in isolation. So we need a system of systems architecture that ensures the development of a fully instrumented, seamlessly interconnected, truly intelligent, smart city. And this is somewhat easier for us at Babcock Ranch because we are starting with a blank sheet of paper. If we get it right from the start, we, we eliminate correcting past mistakes, replacing obsolete technologies, and no retooling is needed to create a fully functional new system of systems. So that's why when you, if, you, if you look at the inner uh, system relationships, it looks so much simpler for Babcock Ranch and much more comprehensive than those created for existing cities. Now, I'd like you to take a look at, at one comprehensive slide that, it ca that attempts to capture all relevant interrelationships that influence the ultimate outcome of a complex process. And I'm going to give you a couple seconds to look at it and to appreciate those, those relations. Ben, would you please put this, this slide up? Now, if you would please give me just a few moments, I'm going to carefully walk through this in detail, starting from the left of this, of this, of this slide. I'm, I'm obviously just kidding. Um, I think that, that, first of all, let me start by saying I think the first thing that you'll notice about this graphic is that it has absolutely nothing to do with smart cities, and that, um, at least not directly. And actually, you, some of you may actually uh, recognize this, uh, this, this PowerPoint slide because it made the front page of the New York Times about six weeks ago. It depicts the American military strategy in Afghanistan. And it, when it was presented to General Stanley McChrystal in a, in a meeting, he took a look at it and he said, quote, by the time we understand that slide, we'll have won the war. <laughs> and yet, as a depiction of the interconnections that exist, it's probably quite accurate. Another member of the brass, Brigadier General H.R. McMaster, called this graphic dangerous because it, it can create the illusion of understanding and the illusion of control. And for that reason, this, so this slide is actually germane to our topic this afternoon. It is presumably, uh, presumably accurate information about relations, or relationships that can't be fully appreciated or even understood by a human being. Uh, the problem is it, it isn't lack of context, it's just too much context. This is everything seen in relation to everything else. So when you have a set of interconnected, interactive relationships like these, you need an intelligent system of systems to monitor and interpret what's happening. So really what you could do here is you could take out all these labels on this chart and replace them with transportation, energy, education, bandwidth, etc., and create the illusion of understanding and the illusion of control within a city. Because Within a city environment, everything is connected to everything else, and everything influences, complicates, and changes everything else. Now, in my own life, I can only think of one area that doesn't have this kind of complexity. And Ben, if you could, I'd like to show you my final slide. Here's a graphic that captures its simplicity. This is not a badly configured game of tic-tac-toe. In fact, it's the kind of planning chart that I studied intensely back in the 1980s. It's just so simple and straightforward. It doesn't, even, it doesn't need a single label. So uh, I'm, you know, believe it or not, if you were in the, you know, this morning at the keynote before I became a Green, Bay, a green uh, City visionary, I was a Green Bay Packer and for a short time uh, a Dallas Cowboy. And actually I'm one of the O's. I'm the O next to the square there uh, in the middle. <laughs> You know, I, I, you know, I look back on those days, though, with, 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 a lot, with great fondness, because when your job is playing football, you really only have one goal, and, and it's really, um, it's never more than 100 yards away. I mean, you're, you know, on offense, when you get on the field, you're, you're trying to score a touchdown. And I think the appeal of football is its awesome simplicity. You know precisely what you want to achieve, precisely where you are in relation to the goal, precisely how much time and how many chances you have to get there, as well as who, precisely, stands between you and your objective. And, and every person on the team understands the goal the same way you do. They, they all speak the same language. And a simple graphic like this accurately, uh, this accurately, accurately represents the entirety of the next part of the plan. And when things do get any more complicated than this, 
a man dressed in black and white, the referee, who see, sees things as black and white, blows a whistle, makes a decision, and then all of a sudden it gets simple again. But what people in this room do every day, and what IT does every day, is play 25, 50, or 100 football games simultaneously. As a member of 25, 50, or 100 different teams, which all play by different rules, which all speak different languages, which are all headed for different goals, without the instant and final decisions of an unimpeachable referee, it creates an almost impossible task of pleasing everyone at the same time or having everything work at the same time. So my goal, and so far I, I think we're on track, is to make IT at Babcock uh, more like a uh, baseball game than, uh, than football. Because, you know, when you look at the communication on a, on a baseball field that goes on, you, you know, you have the catcher, uh, you know, signaling the pitcher and the pitcher shaking off the signals there. You've got the manager strolling out the mound to make, that, make sure everything is, is on the same page. You've got, you know, base running coaches talking to the base runners. You've got outfielders communicating uh, with each other. And, and you know, you know it's, it's really amazing, too, because if it, you, you pay attention to the environment, if it rains, there's actually a rain delay. So, but as much, so as much as I love playing football and watching football, I have to say that it's probably the wrong model for IT interactions. So, I think you folks should consider putting Yogi Berra into the IT Hall of Fame. <laughs> really. <laughs> because one of his famous quotes is so true in IT. Uh, in IT. And, and please listen carefully. Remember, this is a yogiism. Yogi said, in theory, there is no difference between theory and practice, but in practice, there is. Somebody understood that in here, right? <laughs> in theory, the individual systems we rely upon in a city should work well independently of each other. In practice, individual standalone systems work best when they're inter interconnected by IBM software. It's an important lesson for people in my business in particular to learn. You know, it's, it's been a long journey for us at Babcock Ranch, uh, but we've now reached a place where we can begin to do what we've wanted to do all along. And luckily, we reached that uh, spot just as IBM, IBM ramped up its focus on smart planet of smart cities. And, and actually, let, let me amend that, because what we wanted to do changed when we first sat down with Ben and his team uh, from IBM. We wanted to, to be open to change and flexible enough to incorporate uh, new ideas. And, and I think we're on the right track. But IBM helped us further refine our thinking about the role of IT and many of the finer points of the system of systems we knew that we would need to develop. What we want for the city of Babcock Ranch has changed. We've set our sights even higher and our partnership with IBM keeps us, keeps us open, smart, and flexible. With, seven, uh, with a 17,000 acre city, we recognize how hard it will be to hit one out of the park but watch us, visit us, join us in a promising, exciting, and rewarding experience building Southwest Florida's city of tomorrow. Thank you for listening, and Ben, once again, thank you for bringing us uh, Innovate. Really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. That was a great story. Thank you, Said. You know, it was so interesting when I first heard of Babcock Ranch. You know, the first thing I did as a good IBMer is I read their homepage. I Googled his name. And, you know, before the first meeting, I think it took me six weeks with the help of Florida Power and Light. They taught me about nuclear energy, wind, desalination. I didn't want to go there unprepared, right? You know, I get to shake the hands of the president, take a look at what this really is. And he really did keep it simple. After studying six weeks from solid material, materials and resources and energy, he goes, do this, just go to the ranch. And well, yeah, drove over there to Charlotte County and it's the real deal, right? I was so impressed to keep it simple. After studying six weeks, I should have just called him first and just said, what do I do next? So uh, I greatly appreciate you taking the time and sharing your knowledge uh, with us. So very great story and how simple it is.